aren't really my favorites, but they could be. Um, <laughs> they're more like our new toys that we just got. Um, Qualtrics we got in the summer, and Camtasia we got at the very beginning of the semester. So we're still trying to play with it and break it to see what we can do, and then we'll roll out some training. Um, but uh, we have a couple of faculty guinea pigs and some staff members who are using it to see how they like it, uh, feedback, things like that. So Camtasia Relay. Camtasia Relay is a TechSmith product. I'm a big fan of TechSmith. Um, Jing, Snagit, uh, Camtasia Studio, Mac Camtasia, uh, and now Camtasia Relay. So I think all their products are really good. They integrate well within each other and uh, super easy to use. A lot of them are like three button um, steps. So it's just kind of like what it is. So the presentation electric capture screen recording software. Um, basically anything you can put on your desktop, you can record it. Um, some of that might be good, some of that. That might not be bad. I mean, it could be bad for all the copyright issues, but the idea is there for uh, faculty to kind of go about their business if they want to flip the classroom, if they want to just share their content, or they just want to capture something really quick and tutorial purposes or whatever they need to do. This is just kind of the breakdown for us. Uh, we have a site license, so 2000 was for the server, which is uh, we purchased from our ITS department, 15 was from TechSmith. So we have seven simultaneous encoding, so the idea is behind if it's heavy use, uh, we can kind of encode up to seven different videos, um, and then it's just, the other ones just stay in queue and just jumps off from there. 6,000 is for the maintenance, so uh, they take care of us on the back end, and also uh, any support we need as well, too. Uh, again, uh, we talked about the flipped classroom already. Uh, this is idea for this type of thing. Um, you can record modules, lessons. Um, YouTube integration is really big for us. Um, apps are already available. Um, so there's, it's called, a, it's a TechSmith Fuse. So they have it on the iPhone. Uh, I'm not too sure about other devices as far as Android or anything like that, but for sure it has on, on the iOS's. Uh, and it's easy to, to use. Um, really the tools, all you really need is, if you have a laptop, you just need your eyesight, or if you have a webcam, uh, Again, if you have a Mac or nowadays laptops, you can use the audio from that as well too. Or if you have external external cameras, you can use that, um, external mics, really flexible. Um, and it's really smart. So the cool thing about this is uh, built in, baked into it, uh, there's different recorders. So there's the Mac side recorder, there's a PC side recorder. Uh, and then there's also the USB recorder. So ideally if we're offline, we can plug in our USB into the laptop we can do our screen capture, and then later on when we get back online, we plug it in and then we just submit it so you can get your video later on. So that's kind of neat. The smart features, caption and audio search. So if, we, if I'm up here and you're recording me, uh, we go back, we submit it. Um, depending on how we can export it out, uh, the TechSmith software will automatically give you, it'll kind of encode your, your speech. So if we put it in the search box, if I say relay, it'll drop me down to the sections of the video as far as when I said relay, you can look, notice it that way. I'll show you that in just a moment. Um, right now, this is kind of like the tricky part. Uh, based upon users, it, they're built upon profiles. So if we wanted to create a profile for each different department or each different user, I can give you a specific, use, specific profile for only, only you. So within those profiles, I can say, you have the option to only encode and only distribute your, your stuff through YouTube, uh, FTP, or uh, if you use Camtasia for your editing, if you use it for Camtasia, or if you just have an audio program, you can just use it just for the audio. So I can I can use this into different groups or departments as well too. Say only a music department, all they really need to do is just record the audio. So they don't need to worry about the video. I'll send them to that profile as well get. So if we have a group that says we're strictly YouTube, just send me the, the profile just for YouTube. Okay, here's the profile of YouTube, and then you can just use only that profile. Uh, multiple outputs and format file profiles, what we just talked about, and it's locally hosted as well too. So we have uh, our system admin and our ITS department who takes care of us, so he manages that, all that on the back end as well too. So we have issues we just talked to. Everything's LDAP integrated, so uh, everybody's open to faculty, students, and, and staff. So we, just, we threw it out there for everybody. But I'm going to show you the cool thing. 
So here is um, it's just a sample. So this is ideally of what you would be doing on here. So if I wanted to just kind of search for the keyword as far as um, relay, I can do that. It also has built-in uh, captioning, so it does all the hard work for you. So I'll search over here. I'm pretty sure she's gonna say relay like 30 times. So uh, here are my spots. So it just jumps me back to the different timeline of where she's talking about this. So it's easy for somebody to just kind of just get in there and look for the content that you really specifically need. So you really like that a lot. So the closed caption she uploaded, she uploaded the text. It turned out. It does. Yeah. So it's it's How part of the it's part of the program. So uh, it's part of the profile. How, so. How accurate? Yeah, mitosis. It can do mitosis. No, it can do speech, but not often. <laughs> <laughs> so you catch. I've noticed too, like, uh, I'll say something and it's totally wrong. And I did a test the other day, just kind of get a snap, and I'll say snap, snap, snap. It would just grab, like, the first snap, or it would just kind of reword the word snap. And we were doesn't really relay, though. <laughs> <laughs> but you can go in there and edit your caption as well too. So. Okay, okay. So so that's what happens is 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 the faculty goes back in and then and then fixes it. Right. But I mean if they need something to I was impressed, man, if you find my phrase and you know, I was uh, I was impressed. It's like the YouTube one. Have you ever turned on YouTube oh closed captions? Yeah. 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 So. But you can edit it. Can any yeah, yeah. Yeah. You Okay, well, as long as you can edit it. Yeah, you can edit it. Yeah, okay. Alright, so, uh, so that's pretty much straightforward. And then, uh, like I said, right now our, our FTP is not given to everybody on campus for obvious reasons, but if it's by request, we'll give you an FTP account. And so they can automatically have these files put into, go straight to their FTP and then you just send it off like a link. And so they'll be associated with their, their user identification as well, too. But we're also a Google campus, so we're trying to push everybody uh, for this feature to use YouTube. So again, the three steps, once they hit the record button uh, and they hit submit, it automatically goes to their YouTube channel and uh, they can leave it as private, share it, whatever they want to do, and just send it off that way too. Uh, so I will show you this one quick. Actually, you know what? Uh, yesterday, I was just sitting there and uh, I uh, recorded like 10 seconds of, I can't remember your name. Amanda. Amanda. <laughs> and so I just did this on my phone and uh, all you need is a wireless network. I shot it off and sent it back within, I don't know, two, like two minutes or something like that. Uh, so the good thing is we're off campus. I'm not even, I'm far from San Antonio. So it, so it goes back to my server and it shoots it back mm -hmm. towards me. Uh, since it's hooked up to our our email account, it goes sends back to our email account. It tells me exactly what I what I did on YouTube. There's my size and gives me the link as well too. So it's kind of slick that way. Um, so yeah, these are the steps. Once you get past the first two steps, the last three, the last four steps are pretty much straightforward. Uh, the setup, of course, <laughs> setup of course is uh, set up your Camtasia Relay account. You go into your YouTube account and then uh, you download the recorder. So this is the recorder. Uh, so everything is on my screen, as you can see. And, uh, here's the profiles that I set up for myself, just to test. So I have my audio only, and then I have Camtasia Studio. We have Camtasia on some of our Macs and our PCs and our labs. So I had that just in case I want to test something. Uh, we're playing around with the Amazon S3 cloud, so it'll send it to our S3 cloud as well too. Our FTP is there, our YouTube account, and then uploading site later is also there. It has a smart audio, so it adjusts itself. Um, I don't have to do anything to it. If I hit this audio button, now it's not smart anymore. So it's, it's just kind of like whatever I'm taking. But as soon as I hit the audio button, it finds a, a good audio level that, that's suitable for the video, so it's kind of slick. Um, then the easiest steps, all you have to do is hit record. Gives me a countdown. Uh, and then when it's ready, or I just find it down here, I'll just hit stop. 
gives me an opportunity to preview it. The only editing I have is to trim the front and the backs. Um, there's my title. And I select my profile. Go to YouTube. And then you hit submit. And then it'll send it off to the server. Uh, and then later on, it'll give me an email notification. So by the end of this presentation, I'll probably have it, and I'll show you what we just did. So, so that's Camtasia. Uh, these are kind of the same things I was talking about earlier. Uh, this is our user interface. This will take us to the location of all of our videos. Uh, and we can see basically how our profiles are set up. I'll show you that real quick. So earlier we have uh, ACS, I did a, another test. Um, it's captioned editing, so it's, to give, it's prompting me to say, hey, you have some things you need to edit before we actually do the caption editing. And here's where I can probably go in here again and, and edit the caption as well. So these are some of my other tests that I had. Uh, it gives me a presentation list of things that I've done. Um, there's this one that's pending that we just sent right now. There's my completed. That's my processing one right there. So, pretty straightforward. Uh, so that's my user interface. Over here are just kind of some examples as far as like how we're using it for some of the factory. Very typical setup, uh, Word doc, there's your software. Uh, and he's just like, talking about it. Another one is very conish. So he has a document camera, uh, paper, and pen. And this is uh, our videographer. He's actually kind of playing around. So we have WebEx going on. So he's recording the WebEx on top of the WebEx recording itself. I don't know why he's doing a double recording, but he just <laughs> wanted to do that. So, so, it, so I mean, it, like, a, like I mentioned, anything that's on the screen, uh, it'll recognize dual monitors as well, too. So you decide whether you want one or two, and it'll take that, that image as well. So that's Camtasia Relay. Do you have any questions about Where that? Is that encoding happening on your local machine before it uploads to YouTube? It's in uh, on our servers. <coughs> okay, so it uploaded the raw video, and then it's encoding up there. Correct. And then it's pumping it up to YouTube. Right, for whatever destination you get it. So. What languages is supported by the captions? I'm sorry? What language is supported by the captions? Um, I don't necessarily know. Um, That's okay. I think we can reset it, though. Uh, I don't know, we'd have to look into that's that fine. format settings for it. What kind of server did you have, you have set up? Is it? It's a Windows server. Um, I don't know the specific specs of it, but it's a Windows server. Alright. So, Qualtrics. Some of us are familiar with Qualtrics. I guess, uh, again, this is new. This is, um, so we got this in the summer. So it's an online research tool. Actually, it's now becoming more for us as a utility tool. So a lot of faculty are using this for exams. Um, RSVPs, a lot of admins using it for RSVPs. Uh, some faculty are using it for grant applications. Faculty Senate is using it for faculty elections. And then in-class activities, again, for faculty. Um, so they're using it in different ways. And I mean, it's good. We, we, we promote uh, innovative ideas. So. Uh, that's some of the ways they're doing it. The cost is five thousand. Uh, it could go slightly down depending on the size of the university. So there's also I think three or four additional plugins that are not part of the initial um, cost. So those are about twenty five hundred dollars each. They kind of get you right there. Uh, so, but the majority of the site is long. You can do a lot with it. Uh, site license. We pretty much open it up to everybody again too. So faculty, student, staff have unlimited uh, surveys and unlimited responses, which is great for faculty who are doing um, studies like with or research. Uh, they can send it out to anybody and they can receive as many as they want as well too. Why Qualtrics? This is basically a faculty request. Um, it's a branded alternative, more analysis features, uh, and it's better than Google. Probably the reason for the first one. Um, so again, we're a Google campus, so everybody was using Google Forms. Uh, they didn't like the fact that you can do as much in the back end, the analytics of it, or the cross tabulations, or anything like that. So they need something more powerful, with more meat, more brawn. So 
this one, then they found this one and uh, they seem to like it. Uh, like I said, I haven't done too much training. We're still kind of seeing what everybody's doing and how we're going to go about understanding this this piece of a survey machine. So, uh, when you say it's a branded alternative, what does that mean? Um, so, I'll show you. Branded, basically, we have it. Um, so when I send out the survey, it'll say Trinity University okay. compared to mm -hmm. just uh -huh. Survey Monkey or sure. whatever you use. Okay. Okay. And so, so each of those different, each person at your institution has their own account. Correct. And so all their servers are just theirs and nobody can see each other's. Or unless you want them to. So you can do collaboration uh -huh. on this as well. Uh -huh. too, so, so you could do that. Mm -hmm. Well, the big deal for us is they handle all user support. 100%. Right. So nobody's going to ask us any questions anymore because public's <laughs> handling all the phone calls. Ideally. Every question about surveys, about the only thing I've done so far. And I used to support, we had checkbox before, and I supported it a lot. But um, the only thing I've done now really is, is if I can go in quickly and solve somebody's um, account problem, I'll go to the admin side and I'll try to solve it, figure out what was. In fact, pretty much the only problem we've had so far is some of the early adopters Prior to actually the point where it was turned on, they used trial accounts. Mm -hmm. And then as it rolled over to a real account, ultimately that trial account flipped to like no longer working. And Qualtrics was supposed to automatically switch all those accounts over, but they didn't. So all I've had to do is go in and flip that account back to a normal account. So does this use your Davidson login? Uh, yeah, it uses a, we're starting to switch to your one login for everything. And this is the first application that using it. And how long have you been using it? Since this, since the fall. Oh, just since so the fall? So our next big task, which guess who's assigned, <laughs> is trying to figure out how, how we get some of the checkbox surveys that are really important to transfer it over mm -hmm. or migrate it over. Yeah, I haven't, that was another question we had. We had, will our Google Forms go over to Qualtrics and the current answer is no. Mm -hmm. And what kind of, do you know what the plugins are that cost extra, like what yeah, the most important one that really, really popular is uh, the file upload. So if I had, say, I did this for a job application, complete the survey, and upload your application, and but that one is the key one. There's only three. The other two are not really popular, but that's the most significant one. I, I think we should probably purchase. But is this something that AC, that we could do an ACS consortium purchase on? Because we at Center just rolled it out. We had a pilot group in the spring and rolled it out on campus in May. So it's interesting to know mm -hmm. he was in Trinity. I'm not well, sure. What was the key to roll out? Um, psychology faculty kind of pushed yeah. it. I wasn't mm -hmm. part of the conversation, but I got included in, hey, we're going to train everybody to make this happen. Um, this but our psychology faculty have used it at other institutions oh. before they came to Center. And they really they loved it. Plus, you know, um, with the branding and also it's better although we do have some faculty that love survey monkey still so we're not pushing we're just saying here this is what the institution decided to go with um, but we had started off with a pilot and then did training over the summer um, for faculty and staff that they chose training? to what yeah training? we did all that we but, didn't know but, we didn't do any because it's 1-800 yeah and we, and we refer to them but you know there's some yeah. Yes, we do refer to them to call, but they still right. come to us. And we actually have a, a Qualtrics uh, support group that we meet once a month over lunch, we kill pays for, that we just discuss and share what other people are doing. On more so departments, there's a few faculty. But as a way to, hey, I did this, and it will kind of help me be communicate clearer. Well, and they get around it too, so like a lot of departments have their own emails, so they can set up five different accounts, basically, however you have. As long as you have trinity.edu attached to it, you can have as many as you want. Uh, and I've noticed, too, that, uh, say, if I needed to coll collaborate with you, you don't necessarily have to have a Qualtrics account. I can just share it with you, and you log in. Uh, you log in, and then you can handle my, my survey. Yeah, I've gotten some requests from people because there's a lot of departments on campus that pay for SurveyMonkey Pro accounts, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people have said to me, why do we each pay for this? Why don't we, ha you know, 
But with SurveyMonkey, it's one login. So, like, we have an IT account, which I give to people. And then if somebody's doing an important survey, I change the password. Like, sometimes I do faculty elections using this. So during the time of the faculty election, I'll change the password so only I can get in. And then when the election's over and I've deleted the survey results, I'll change the password back to the one that lots of people know um, so that they can do it. So I've been thinking about, since Qualtrics seems to have generated some traction, I've been thinking about maybe we should just invest in this so that everybody can have their own account. Yeah, I, don't, I don't have to mess with this anymore. But what is it truly anonymous? I'm oh, sorry? What is it truly anonymous? Yes. So you have two options. Um, the way it's, it works is basically you can cr you create panels. And so in my panel is my group. So if you have a, a listserv of all your faculty, you, the CSV file, basically you upload it, uh, that's your, pa your panel. And so you can submit your survey that way, which everybody will get their data with their first and last names, whatever information you have on the CSV file. Or you have an anonymous so where it's just a link. So you send that link out and anybody can take this multiple times. Compared to the other way, if I have it within my panel, that one link that I give you, if I know your name, if I'm sending it directly to you, you only get to take it one time. Yeah. So like Sherman Monkey collects the IP address. Yeah. So does this yes. collect it? Yeah. This also but you does can, collect you it. can turn that off in the survey option. There's an anonymized response, so it's completely, oh, because okay. we didn't know that at yeah, first in, in, in Qualtrics. Okay. We didn't know that at first, and then discover that, oh, and it doesn't collect the IP, it doesn't collect anything. Okay. So okay. It, our, our, our IRB, yeah. Uh, the group is actually you can uh, yeah. only Does it time stamp it? Huh? Does it time stamp the response or is that something you I think it's date and time stamp, yeah. so you still have that okay. problem. Mm -hmm. It's institutional. Just one other piece of data. I was not um, involved with thing was a group that actually evaluated this last year. Our psych department also tends to generate a lot more surveys than anyone else. And we actually have two different survey tools. We had something called Snap Survey. And then we had checkbox. Checkbox was kind of low end. Snap survey was the really high end stuff where they would actually have surveys, for example, where images were only displayed for three tenths of a second, or they only had seven tenths of a second to respond before it flicked off. So the psych department was doing a lot of stuff like that. This one was the one that they came up with that could handle both the simple ones and the complex ones. Right. I called the tech support too, and I was like, well, what if I want to drill down to one specific question? Is all like, it's a beast, you ready to conquer? And I was like, oh man. So I was like, it's, yeah, it's, it's really powerful in the back end, and so it does a lot. But as far as a user in its basic surveys, it's like 100% simple to use, uh, but it does have capability to kind of take you back to that level. Um, so the cool thing is uh, there's over 100 plus question types. Um, no more just one single multiple choice option. You have like uh, a couple of them, 10, 20. Uh, collaboration and share. Um, various distribution options. You can do social media here. Um, you can do uh, plugins. You can do embedding, uh, things like that. Uh, it's cloud based, unlimited surveys and responses, culture support staff, and it's constantly being improved. Like just recently, they sent out an uh, update as far as the integration with Word, uh, PowerPoint, and Excel, things like that. So the survey results can be pushed into a Word document, something easier you can manage compared to if it's just on the web, web, uh, website. So we've been using that. Uh, another cool thing is like basically everywhere on the site, they always have these little icons. So you can download all these results into PDF, into Word, whatever you want at any time. So there's always that option. And one thing I've noticed too, is that every time I get a question, like can I do this? Usually the answer is yes. I haven't found a, an answer to say no. Uh, so the only thing I did find, I don't know if y'all found, is like we can't do custom URLs, which is kind of sad. Uh, unless you can, I'm not too sure. I haven't looked into that yeah. yet. So that, that was like the only thing that was like a drawback. So if I had to create a custom URL, I think that would be great. But other than that, um, all the answers to everybody's questions have been yes, you can do that. So I'm really, really pleased with this one. Couldn't you use Bitly or something like you that? You could use Bitly. Okay. But Hopefully they would bake it in here so we can just go. Yeah, right, exactly. The one, the one thing I realized when we were working on this faculty survey for um, how they were using technology in the classroom was I collaborated with another faculty member. And I called Qualtrics because he was in there editing. You know, with Google, you can see when people aren't in there editing, blah, blah, blah. And 
he was in there editing, but I couldn't see that. I didn't have it real time. And when I had called them back in May, they were like, oh, that's a good question. Or we wish we had a solution for that. So that's something he said that they were going to put on the ticket. But I don't know if you have encountered the same thing. But to not be able, when you do share, they have edit permission. If by chance you guys are both working at the same time, you don't see that instant thing. That you yeah. would it's with. always mainly a refresh. Yeah, refresh. exactly. Yeah. Would it overwrite? I mean, if you were yeah. working and then you know, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Do any of you who have it have a relationship with the salesperson? Mm, no. No. Um, our, I guess our director has a name of a contact person, but when I have called to look into a few things further, I've just gotten a random person here and there. So. Really yeah, I just don't know about asking the question of whether they would give us some sort of consortial pricing. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, may, maybe what they would do is say, well, you have to pay 5000 a year, but we'll give you all the plugins. Right. So, yeah. Right? And that would save, mm -hmm. that that would save a lot of money. Then you could pay your 5000 and get all your plugins instead of having to pay the extra yeah. right. money. They're really reasonable, too. Like, when I uh, just recently asked about the plugin, I was like, well, the school's almost over. We said, well, we'll, we'll prorate it for you. I was like, cool. All right. And you yeah. send it off, send me a quote, and then... Mm -hmm. Do it that way. So they're flexible as far as that, or they are willing to. I think just to get you in the door, they're willing to do a, a trial or do a thirty day. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, there's always that option. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the aspect of the consortium, though. Mm -hmm. That could be something we look into. Do you use their mobile app? Uh, there is no mobile app, so to speak. There, there yeah. is, and we what? only paid the five thousand. We didn't pay for file flow, which I was upset with. Yeah. And we also, are, we had an ITS programmer who actually had to work and get the accounts created because it was an additional charge to have it sync with Active Directory. But our version does not work with the mobile app. Because when we got the email out, I'm like, oh, perfect. It doesn't work with it doesn't what get we paid for. Reviews, it's really, mm -hmm. you, have to pay you have to pay to additional yeah. whatever fee. Okay. Um, so these are steps, pretty simple. Once you log in, it's basically built on tabs, and I'll show you the user interface real quick. So it's like it goes from left to right. So you create, you edit, distribute, and then you review the results. Uh, pretty straightforward. So uh, these are just some uh, examples of how our faculty are using this. So this is a very typical one that our psychology have users as well too. This is their their release form. Uh, very standard. Branding, like I said earlier, branding's in the corner. Um, so this is the first page, and then of course you would just click on continue to answer the questions. Uh, this is a grant application that our engineering department is working on, or sends out to the students, or whoever he does, I'm not exactly sure, but this is a grant uh, application. Here's our, for our admins, or any other kind of things like that, RSVP. Uh, and then uh, over here is actually, uh, it's kind of a, that's an assessment, basically, as far as like what they should get on their assignments, I think. So mm -hmm. this is another one that another faculty did. Uh, this is actually an activity. So instead of using, a, we use Moodle, so instead of uh, doing activities, they kind of use this instead. Uh, and the last one is probably the coolest one that we were working on with one of the faculties, and she had so many guidelines, it was like, I couldn't figure out something to use, and so we couldn't do it in Moodle, we couldn't do it in any other stuff. Uh, and so we created this one. So basically her idea was she wants to give her students a time limit to take the, her essay. So it, based upon her essay, the students have to locate, look at the image, answer the question, and then enter their essay into the block, into the box. And of course this has a time limit. Uh, so it'll count it down. And of course, once it's done, it closes the survey, so uh, then, the results, they spit it out into the results and they, they, they pump it out into uh, Word doc and she can go on and edit it from there. So that was kind of cool. That was cool. Um, so let me show you just kind of what it looks like. So it's kind of the layout over here is like all your tasks. You can edit. Um, do the results. Here's my collaboration. I can copy it to save it again. Uh, so if I want to recreate the whole survey again, uh, for our bilingual people, we can translate. 
you delete. Uh, so if I want to create, another cool thing is, um, say you have an idea as far as what you want to serve. You don't have to go through the trouble of thinking out every single question. They have a library of, of hundreds of different surveys you can just grab from and just kind of create and tweak it or add your own questions and all from there too. So the hardware is done for you. So we'll click create. Here's that uh, library I was talking about. So we just jump in here. Now we have all of our choices. So each one of these has uh, different options. So these are all the different options I'll talk about. All of these are now uh, adapted to your devices. So they just pushed out that latest update as well too. So if you don't have to worry about, will this look good on my iPhone, will this look good on my, my tablet? It automatically does that for you. Beforehand, they used to have, well, these are for good for mobile, these are good for web. Now they just took out all the bad ones and just kept them all to integrate to your devices. Uh, so after you're done, you can just click distribute. So after you activate your survey. Uh, this is your anonymous link. So all I have to do is copy that and put it into an email or whatever you want to do, maybe post it on the website or something. This is what you would use. Uh, if I needed to email to somebody, I just click on email. Uh, depending on what you have already created as far as uh, your panels, uh, this is all my faculty, so I'll just load it in there, and everybody can get this particular email. Uh, there's a lot of different features, but then there's also the cool thing to where, like, say all my faculty, I need them to respond to this email, the survey, for sure. Uh, so anybody who hasn't responded, we can set up re reminders, so in a day or so, It'll send out a reminder to all the people who have not responded. And then we can also set it to have a, have a, a thank you reminder too. So in two or three days or whatever, send out a thank you to all the people who have responded as well. Uh, and then this is just the, this is the, only, the only difference from the user from, from the admin is that one button. So here I can just go in here and customize exactly who I want to have certain privileges, who I don't. Uh, maybe students, I want to limit them as far as the surveys they, they take or uh, some of the questions they can use. Um, so yeah. Um, and then I'll just, do you have any questions on that one? So if you want, if you have QR, you can take this little survey. That's too cute. But, uh, I, I like it. Um, like I said, we're still learning. Um, we'll probably be rolling out some training pretty soon. Um, the heavy users are psychology, so like us as well too. This is my survey. Are your staff using it too then? And do you support them? Or is IT, how do they get supported? I'm kind of like a big brother with the staff. Mm -hmm. Like, figure it out kind of thing. But, uh, but uh, the majority of like, some of the staff are using it. Uh, like a lot, of, like I showed earlier, a lot of the admin secretaries, they're using this. They switched over from SurveyMonkey. It's easier for them to use now. Um, it's all branded as well, too, so they like that, that aspect of it. Do you have institutional research or something like that at your school? Like, I think at Rhodes, they want to know everything about, they kind of control how survey is done mm -hmm. so that they can collect all that data. Are they involved with this? Do they want the data that comes out of some of these? The IRB. Just anybody can do a survey anyway. Pretty much, yeah. We haven't really figured out a policy to police these type of things. Uh, so ideally, it's more of an ethical thing, like on the faculty or whoever. They have to get their IRB stuff done, and then they use this, obviously, to push it out to whoever do the survey. It's up to them if they need to report. Right. Like We're basically here for the support and kind of showing show the tools of it. We're not here to kind of base it and uh, police it as well. Too. That's right. And like we have, anybody can go out and get a survey monkey. Account, yeah, right. So we can't control that. So yeah. we'd be able to control it. So. And I don't really can control, but they request data given they need the data. They right. want to know what surveys are being done so that they, if it's data that they can use, they, they want it. Yeah. Right, right. When 
Nara and the department got wind that we were going to potentially looking at Qualtrics, they actually said, okay, we'll get it and we'll help manage right, it for campus. That's what I would and imagine. So we do the academic right. surveys, but they do the administrative. Right, um, but you all use Qualtrics. And I shouldn't say, I mean, they do the academic, the ones that are related straight to SAT. But, uh, right. We'll but everybody uses Qualtrics. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, there, there's you probably still it. some uh, survey monkey accounts. Yeah, but you have it, and it's used in this way, but it's also used in yeah. more the stuff that they collect for faculty. Thanks, Jake. Very much. Yeah. Yeah.